relation to wolves, what has the Endangered Species Act or the administration of the act done well? And in a minute, I'm gonna ask you what it hasn't done well, so don't stray. First Larry, then Ed, then Mike. I think the thing that the Endangered Species Act has done well, whether you're talking about wolves or any other species that's been listed under the Endangered Species Act, is it does create a framework of expectation and mandate for ensuring the survival and continuation of that species and providing for its persistence in the wild. It is the one act that has uh, the most uh, concrete teeth. The National Environmental Policy Act uh, is a process-oriented act that requires disclosure of impacts, but it doesn't require that those impacts be dealt with. You have to talk about how you'll deal with them, uh, if you could or would, but with a full-blown EIS, you don't really have to mitigate. Under the Endangered Species Act, you have to take a concrete positive actions to try and maintain uh, the species so it can persist in the wild. And that's the contribution of the act. I think the biggest contribution is it creates that umbrella that drives a societal movement to provide for the management and protection of a species so that it will persist and continue in the wild. Ed. I think, I think one thing the Endangered Species Act does is focus attention on a particular species and just use wolves as an example. Uh, with a listing, all of a sudden you've got all the federal agencies kind of talking to each other. You've got the Section 7 consultation process in place for land management agencies to see how their activities affect listed species. Um, in theory, you've got the states as partners with this. You've got NGOs involved. And so a lot of brings a lot of coordination and focus to a specific problem or, or issue. The other thing the act does that I've noticed is it puts a lot of money into animals. When wolves are listed, you have a lot of federal dollars flowing into the system, uh, supported by state and tribal dollars, to kind of focus research on particular problems so you can get good information and make better decisions. I think that's pretty useful. Um, I think the biggest thing is really the coordination the act provides, that it makes everybody kind of focus on a species. It defines an endpoint, what is recovery. It defines the roadmap of how to get there. And then it allows the money and the resources to kind of head in that direction. And it defines what recovery is. So you know what the goal is, before, in theory, before you start out. You're not just kind of wandering around. You're saying, we want at least 300 wolves and 30 breeding pairs for at least three years in the Northern Rocky Mountains. That's a measurable criteria. Everybody can see the goal post, and hopefully you're not trying to switch that mid-road. So I think it, that clear vision allows people to see the problem clearly, see the solutions, and the end point. And, and I think that's the biggest thing. And Mike. Uh, you should see throughout this debate that because of the way the Endangered Species Act is written, there's really a great deal of common ground between myself and Larry and Ed. I agree with everything they've just said. And I will only add to that uh, that what the act has done is promote population growth and then correspondingly the aerial expansion of gray wolves. I'm convinced you would not have thousands of gray wolves in the Great Lakes states absent the Endangered Species Act. You would not have well over a thousand gray wolves in the Northern Rocky Mountains absent the Endangered Species Act. You would not have a Mexican wolf program in the Southwest or a red wolf program in the Southeast without the Endangered Species Act. It is, however, very hard. I just gave you moments ago a rather simple answer to the question, what is recovery? What you have to note is while the answers are relatively simple, implementing activities under the Act to achieve recovery is very difficult. Larry's right, it's tough given the way it's written. But it's tough on purpose. You know, the Act puts economic issues in the back seat and says that the biological needs of the species in question are paramount. And you know why that is? There's lots of options to manage around economic problems. There's no option to manage around extinction. It's not a conditional state, it's absolute. The best thing the Endangered Species Act has done for gray wolves is promote population growth in the uh, Great Lakes states, the Northern Rocky Mountains, the Southeast, the Southwest, and that says a lot.